today we are going to be talking to you all about the Doppler effect and redshift. Um, this is one of those kind of core G uh, I try it, one of these really core uh, A-level kind of uh, tools that we make a uh, huge uh, use of uh, on pretty much every exam board, um, but CIE in particular uh, seem to come up with this a fair amount uh, on their courses, so this is one of those things where you're going to really want to learn these equations and you're going to want to be able to apply them. Um, now, I've put in the comments this video a primer video that I've seen online, which is a great introduction to what Redshift is, um, what the Doppler effect is, um, and I really, really do recommend that you go and watch that first, because it's a great way just of uh, getting an idea of what we are talking about. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, go and watch it now, and then come back to me. Okay, I'm assuming that you've uh, gone and done that, so let's go straight on to talking about what is it. So the dry definition, I do suggest that you learn it, is it's the apparent change in frequency or wavelength of a wave when the source of the wave is moving towards or away from the observer. Um, or the other way of saying is uh, if the observer is moving relative to the source. Uh, so we see lots of examples of this on the slide here. This is a stationary source, so uh, nobody's moving. Uh, and we see the waves spreading out equally in all directions. Whatever distance I measure in any direction along the wave is the same. However, if I have a source which is moving that way, and I'm going to call it Vs for the uh, velocity of the source, then what we see is that along the direction that the object is travelling in, the wavelength appears uh, to be shorter, and away from the direction of travel, the wavelength appears to be longer. And similarly, if I was to stand here and uh, have a fixed observer at this point, they would see a shifted frequency, so both frequency and wavelength will appear different for an observer. Uh, it's also important to remember that this works uh, if the source is moving, but it also works if the observer is moving. So if I'm moving towards the object, so I give myself velocity observer, um, I would also see a Doppler shift. doesn't matter who's moving. If there is movement between two bodies, we're going to get Doppler shift. Now that's pretty obvious, um, but it has loads of really cool applications. Um, so one of the ones that comes up a lot in physics is the redshift of galaxies. There's some really, really cool stuff that we can see here. Um, it's one of the ways that we know the universe is expanding, because when we look at pretty much any star, um, we should see a pattern like this that we see here. Um, I'm going to put should. Um, that's what you would see if you look at the light from a star in a lab. Uh, obviously we can't really get a whole star into a lab, they're quite big. <laughs> physics jokes, uh, but instead, uh, obviously, we would look at probably mainly hydrogen and helium because they're going to have the same kind of uh, pattern of light. But what we see in actuality is that all of these bands are moved towards the red end of the spectrum. Now, that doesn't mean that they're actually a different element. What it means is the light itself has been stretched out or its wavelength has changed. And that tells us that the galaxies are moving away from us or if you remember what I said on the previous slide, we're moving away from the galaxies. And because that looks that way at every single galaxy we look at, pretty much all of them are moving away from us, we can be pretty certain that the universe must be expanding. Uh, you might also see questions about this, uh, some forms of radar can use uh, Doppler shift as well. So rain radar is quite cool for that. If we fire a uh, radar pulse at a cloud, what we find is that if our pulse reflects back to us Doppler shifted, that means that the rain is falling, it's got velocity relative um, to our satellite, so we know that it's raining, and that's how you might hear rain radar or Doppler radar being used for rain. Um, a bunch of other things, um, speed cameras as well, they use radio waves, they fire it at your car. The more the light comes back red shifted, the more we know that your car is speeding. If the car's coming towards you, the more it's blue shifted the more we know it's speeding. Okay, so that's all well and good, but let's be physicists about this, so let's try thinking about some equations. So what I want you to imagine is, just in this diagram here, 
we've got a stationary source here. It's not moving, and we have a stationary observer. And what we are going to say is that this is over the course of one second. So in one second, I've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight waves. So my frequency is eight hertz. Now, the distance from the source to the observer, in this case, um, in one second, will be the speed of the waves multiplied by one second, because as we know, speed is distance over time. We've been learning that one since year seven. So that means that the wavelength, lambda naught, which I'm going to say is my initial wavelength, that is going to be my total uh, distance uh, which is c, because c is the speed of my waves, so that would be the distance that they've travelled, divided by the number of waves, so c over f. This is just the same, similar to the equation that we know for waves, which is v, ooh, that's a terrible colour to use, uh, which is v is equal to f lambda. Um, however, for waves, or for light waves, c is often used. So that gets a little bit confusing because sometimes we use c to mean the speed of light, sometimes we use c to mean the speed of a wave, sometimes we use speed, c to be the speed of a wave, which is also light, which is also th c. Physics is weird, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, we've got a wavelength here. Oh, I'm going to just make this uh, f naught because we know the uh, frequency is going to be changing. So I'm going to say that the stationary or unredshifted wavelength is equal to the speed of the waves divided by the unshifted or stationary frequency. Lambda naught is equal to C over F naught. So now we're going to consider a slightly different situation. I want you to imagine that the source is now moving to the right. And it has speed uh, US. Why not? The waves are still going to be travelling at speed C. And we're going to take the same idea that we've got one second. Now, if you think about the actual source, what is a source of nearly always going to do? Generally speaking, a source doesn't know how fast it's travelling, so a source will just give out the constant frequency. Let's think about a loudspeaker. You know what you, thinking about what you know about sound, we know that uh, a certain note might be 400 hertz. That means the loudspeaker itself is going to vibrate 400 times a second doesn't matter if that car is on a Mivy going down the highway at 30 kilometres an hour. Mivy's might be a bit faster than that, but not much. Um, it's still going to be going 400 times a second. So we're still going to have eight waves in one second. Frequency of the actual number of waves is unchanged. However, now the distance between those waves is actually different. The distance between the waves is C minus U meters. Why is that? Well, if the waves were, if it was stationary, it would have been C. But in that same time, in that same one second, S has moved from here to here. Now, U will be the uh, speed of the wave, sorry, speed of the uh, source. So in one second, it will have moved its speed, because speed is in meters per second. Um, so the actual distance between all of our waves will be c minus u. Now that means that our new wavelength, which I'm going to call uh, lambda 1, that will be equal to c minus u over f, because I want the wavelength, which is the distance between one of my waves. In this case, I've got 8. So I'll be dividing it by 8, but I can generalise that and say it is just C minus U over F. So let's think about the apparent frequency. That's the frequency that the person listening to waves uh, will hear. Um, let's use the wave equation again. Um, so the uh, frequency that they will appear to hear in their ears, or, or appear to see, uh, will be 
f, which we're going to call f1 for the received frequency, is equal to the speed of the waves divided by lambda1, which is the uh, wavelength, the, the apparent wavelength. Um, now, it's just worth noting, I'm going to go back to the uh, previous equation that I wrote here, and I'm just going to make that f0, uh, or the uh, original frequency, because I, st excuse me, I still have eight waves. Um, so the new wavelength, it will be c minus u, but it'll still be divided by eight, so it'll be that original frequency. And this is the, uh, the important bit of getting how the equation comes up. So I've got my two equations I've just written up there for memory. Uh, the frequency observer sees or hears is a new frequency that we've called f1. Well now that means that what we can do is rewrite the last example. We know that f1 is equal to c over lambda 1. And we know what lambda 1 is. So we can say f1 is equal to c divided by c minus u. And I'm going to put this as us this time for u as the source divided by f0. And if I just rearrange that, that becomes c f0 over c minus us. Now, we want to make this a little bit more general. So um, the equation that you'll see in your textbooks um, and in the CIE papers is f0 for the apparent or the received frequency, the frequency that the observer hears. V is the speed of the wave, the speed of propagation of the wave. Fs is the source frequency, so the frequency that is being emitted. And Vs is the speed of the source. So that this equation can be rewritten as F0, or the observed frequency, is equal to V, which is the speed of the wave, times Fs, which is the speed of the source, divided by v minus vs, so the velocity of the source. That's for when you're moving towards an object. What about when you're moving away? Well, I'm not going to go through the whole example, but hopefully you can see that, and maybe try this for yourself, when you're moving away, it's almost identical, except that it becomes f0 is equal to vfs, divided by v plus, ooh, that's a terrible yellow again, plus vs. So whether it's plus or minus at the bottom here depends on if we're moving towards or away. Um, so to work out which equation to use, you've basically just got to use common sense. And remember that if an object is moving towards you, you'd expect a higher frequency. If it's moving away from you, you'd expect a lower frequency. And so we end up with this final equation that you can see on the screen in front of you, uh, which is F0 is equal to Vfs divided by V plus or minus Vs. Um, and you just need to decide, when you look at the context of the problem, do I need to add these or take these away in order to get a frequency that goes up or down as I would expect it. So there you go, that's it. Um, you don't actually be, need to be able to derive this equation for your course, but I think it's really useful if you can. Um, you should certainly be able to understand what is Doppler shift and what causes it. Uh, in the lesson, we're going to be doing a little bit of work uh, with seeing if we can calculate some uh, speeds, which I think would be quite an interesting uh, little attempt. Um, so I'll put some more instructions on Classroom, but I do need you to download the software Audacity uh, onto your MacBooks or your laptops. Um, and that'll really help us in the next lesson do some pretty cool stuff, seeing if we can actually measure velocity. Looking forward to it. I will see you soon.